What's up, scholars? Today we're going to talk about applications of exponential functions. But first, look how much my dog is growing. Say hi, Bean. Hello. Yes. Lots and lots of growth is happening. We're going to talk about exponential growth. She's fortunately not growing exponentially right now. That would be kind of crazy. She's growing linearly, which we'll talk about in... Uh, we'll compare those two in just a second, but yeah, she's great. Hope you guys are great. I miss you so much. Send me all of your 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 animal pictures. Yeah, let's share our animals together. That would be great. Awesome. Okay, bye, Bean. We'll be back at the end. Yeah. Okay, so first let's compare linear functions and exponential functions. Linear functions look like lines. A linear function has a constant rate of change, i.e. a slope. Constant average rate of change, aka a slope. Right? So the rate of change from that was one, two, three, the rate of change from this point to this point is the same as the rate of change over the same distance. Okay? They have the same average rate of change. An exponential function on the other hand has a constant percentage change. Constant percentage rate of change. Great drawing, Atkin. Awesome. So good. So if we did the percent change between these dudes here, they would be the same. Okay, cool. So we have exponential functions that grow and exponential function, functions that decay. Let's slide this up a bit. Great. So we have exponential growth and exponential decay. Now an exponential growth function, when you go from left to right grows, i.e. goes up. Woo! An exponential decay function, when you go from left to right, decays or it goes down. They have really similar equations. The exponential growth function is going to be, uh, let's say, f of t is a times 1 plus r to the t. And the exponential decay function, f of t is a times quantity 1 minus r to the t. Now in both of these cases, a is going to be our initial value. And r is going to be our rate of change which will be some sort of percent change, like an 8% growth per year, or a 0.25% decay each year. Uh, so for adding that rate of change, we'll have a positive growth. Okay? If we are subtracting that rate of change, we will have decay. Uh, we talked about this last time, when the base is greater than 1, it's growth. When it is less than 1, it's decay. So obviously if we have 1 plus some number, that base, that 1 plus some number is going to be greater than 1. And if we have 1 minus some number, that will be less than 1. Okay, That's how we get our growth and decay. Uh, exponential functions show up all over the place in the real world, uh, in finance, with uh, interest rates, in spreading of disease. You guys might have seen some information re-COVID 
and its exponential uh, growth as far as spreading the disease. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. The spreading of disease is never actually completely exponential. It doesn't go up forever and ever and ever, right? Again, if you've been watching the news, they're talking about flattening the curve. So we are looking for the, the point in time where we stop this exponential growth in disease spreading and it flattens off, which is actually part of a logistic curve, uh, which we're not going to get into. Um, maybe I'll put a link to an awesome video that I saw uh, that explains that pretty well. I think I will. I think I'll definitely do that. Okay, cool. Um, but these are very relatable to real life, real life activities, and they're not very intuitive. Um, because what happens is you start off slow, and then all of a sudden, you're growing really fast. And it's hard for our brains to understand that, you know, because we're starting off just like pretty easy, like we're, we're easing into something, and then all of a sudden it takes off. And it is not intuitive to our our brains, uh, so it's something we're gonna have to practice. So uh, with that, let's do a little bit of practice. All right, so here's our first example. Let's say you uh, get a bit of money here, and uh, you are savvy enough to know that uh, if you want to make some serious money, you got to start off with some money. That getting the initial money is is a challenging part, but. So you put $7,500 into an investment account, and this account is projected to grow at 9% interest per year. Uh, this is actually a really good interest rate. So let's identify a couple key things about this situation, and then we will come up with our equation, and we'll graph it, and show how much money we have after, let's say, seven years. So we're going to identify the independent variable, the dependent variable, the rate, and decide whether it's growth or decay, the initial value, and then we'll make up an, or come up with our equation that models this situation. What is our independent variable? We're putting money into account, an account and getting interest per year. The independent variable here is going to be time. Right? Time depends on nobody. Time is very often our independent variable. And let's use T for that guy. Our dependent variable, what's happening over this course of time? We are getting some money. Right? So our dependent variable here is going to be the dollars. And since we're going to write this as a function, we'll call that a function based on time f of t. Now our rate said it is nine percent growth per year. So nine percent. We're going to write our rate as a decimal is going to be 0 0.09, and we know that's growth. So this is going to be exponential growth. Now our initial value, we are starting out with $7,500. Now we can make our equation. So f of t equals our initial value, 7,500 times, we said it was growth, so it's going to be 1 plus our rate here, 0 0.09 to the t which we can simplify to f of t equals 7500, 1 plus is 1.09 to the t. Okay, we're going to do a quick sketch of this graph. Uh, slide you up. Great. So our x-axis is our independent variable time. Our y-axis is our dollar dollar build y'all. Um, let's put three points on this graph. So we'll make a quick table here of time and dollars. At time zero, when we very first begin this investment, how much money do we have in the account? 7500 Nice. How about after one year, how much money do we have? Well, let's plug it into our handy dandy calculator. We want 1.09 to the 
t, which I can't actually do on this calculator, but 1.09 to the first power is 1.09. So 1.09 times 7,500 is going to be, and we're up to $8,175 after one year. How much money do we make? I mean, 650 bucks. Or sorry, 675 bucks. Not too bad. How about after two years? So 1.09 to the second power is 1.09 times 1.09 times 7,500. All right, after year two, we've got $8,910. Uh, I'm just going to round to the nearest dollar, so this will be... Eight thousand nine hundred and eleven, eleven dollars. Sweet. Okay, now we can do a little sketchy sketch. So we've got time zero, we've got time one, we've got time two. Uh, let's sketch this out real quick. So I'm gonna do the thing where you put the like a little squiggle which says, I'm starting at zero, and then I'm going to skip a whole bunch of numbers, because I don't need any numbers here until, you know, 7,500. So let's put maybe 7,500, and then uh, 8,000, and then 5,000, and then 9,000. So at time zero, we've got 7,500. And at time one, we're at slightly over 8,000. At time two, we're way up here. Cool. And this one, curve and keep going up forever and ever. Great. Is my drawing beautiful? Of course it is. It's wonderful. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see, your money starts growing pretty quickly after a while. Uh, how much money would we have after seven years? If we plug a seven in here, we're at 1.09 to the seventh power. I'm not going to use this calculator. I'm going to go find a different one and come back to that. Turns out 1.09 to the seventh power is 1.828 times our 7,500 initial. Holy crap! After seven years, we have... $13,000! $13,710! How much money did we make? We made $6,000! By just letting that money sit there. Sometimes, exponential functions are the bomb. They make us some dollar dollar bills, y'all. So let's also talk about the domain and range of this function. Saw some issues with that in the previous lessons. So the domain of this function, remember, the domain of this function means all the possible x values. Now this is a real life scenario at this point. Okay, we have money in an account that's growing. So we want to talk about the real life domain, the real life possible x values. What's our lowest x value here? It's zero, right? We don't have negative time. So yes, this function would go back forever that way if it was just a function, but it's a real function. It's a real domain. So our lowest x value is zero. Now I don't have an upper limit on the time. I'm not saying I'm taking the money out of some sort of point. So this would continue on forever, theoretically, but even in theory, we're not going to go backwards in time. So our domain is going to be starting at zero, going up to infinity. Oh, infinity money, speak of the power! Now how about the range? Those are the possible y values of this real life function. Well, what's our lowest y value? We start here, and then theoretically it's going to go up forever for our infinite monies. Actually, I think I was going a little crazy here, right? 
Our domain is talking about our time, so infinite time. We go from time zero to infinite time. Our range is starting at 7,500 going up to infinity. So there's our infinity monies, and there's our infinite time. Cool. All right, so this was an exponential growth example. Now we're going to do, you guessed it, an exponential decay example. Gosh, you guys are brilliant. So brilliant. All right. So here's our next example. You're going to buy a car. You're going to buy a brand new car for $25,000. And unfortunately, as soon as you buy a car, it starts depreciating immediately. As soon as you drive it off the lot. What does that mean? It loses value. Yep. That's the real deal. That's what it is. Okay, so let's talk about all the different parts of this function. Let's write out our equation. Let's do a little graphy graph and talk about that money. So we're going to find the independent variable, the dependent variable, the initial value, the rate, decide whether it's growth or decay, and then write out our equation. So independent variable. What are we doing? We're buying a car, and that car is depreciating some amount uh, per year. So our independent variable, the thing that uh, doesn't depend on anything, just keeps the margin on, it's going to be our time. Again, miss independent, miss time. What's our dependent variable? What happens over time? Well, money happens based off of that time. So we're talking about the dollar dollar bills again. And we're going to write it as a function, so we'll call it a function of time. F of t. What's our initial value? Uh, well, we're talking about the value of the car, really. So initially, when we buy it, it's 25 large. And what is our rate? It's 11%, and that as a decimal is 0 0.11. And since it's depreciating, it is losing value. This is going to be decay. Also, we said at the beginning we were doing a decay example. So, what's our equation for decay? It's the same thing as growth, except for we're going to do 1 minus the rate. So our function f of t is our initial value 2500 times 1 minus our rate this time to the t. So we can do our 1 minus, we'll get 2500, 1 minus 0.11 is 0 0.89 to the t. Cool. Now let's do a little graphy graph. Again, our dependent variable, our independent variable, sorry, is time. Our dependent variable is the monies. Let's make a quick little table here. When we start off at time zero, our car is worth $25,000. And then immediately we drive it off a lot and it loses a value because that's the way this kind of cookie crumbles so after one year how much is our car worth ah uh, so we're going to do 0 0.89 to the first which is just 0 0.89 times 2500 and we'll get ooh burn 22,250 so we lost a good good amount of money in that first year, didn't we? $2,750. Bummer. How about after two years? Well, 0.89 to the second is 0.89 times 0.89 times 2,500. Oh, man! We're not even in the $20,000 range anymore. Ah, big time bummers.
round to the nearest dollar. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's put that on a Jeff here. We'll graph. We got our time zero. We got our time one. We got our time two. I'm going to do that thing. Because I don't need numbers for a while. Um, Let's go. We need... Uh, how about... 20,000, because we're going to go a little under that. And then we'll say... 2-2. Two, two. Let's go right in the middle. Yep, 2-2. Two, 2-5-0. Two, two, five, two, Cool. So a zero, we're there. A one, we're here. A two, we're underneath that. And this would continue for a while. Great. <clears throat> now let's talk about the domain and range of this function. Sliding her up a wee bit. Again, the domain are all the possible x values here. Possible x values. So this is a real function. This is happening in real time. So our lowest x value, our lowest time is 0. And this would continue on forever to the right, going up to infinite time. Infinite time. How about the range? This is a real function. <clears throat> so, we are starting with $25,000, and this would continue on forever, forever in this negative direction here. going all the way to zero dollars, <clears throat> but we know from previously that there is a, uh, the word I want here is asymptote, so we'll never actually reach zero dollars, so it's got to be an open parenthesis. Starting off with some good money and losing money every year. It's just how it goes. Now usually you have to take out a loan to pay for a car. Right, you get a, a loan from the bank, help you pay for this car. Let's say you took out a five-year loan for the car. <clears throat> How much is your car going to be worth after those five years that you spent paying it off? Let's see. So we want 0 0.89 to the fifth. 0 0.89 times 0.89 times 0.89 times 0.89 times 0.89. Was that right? 0.89 to the fifth is that beauteous number times our initial value. The car is now only worth $13,960. And you would have taken out a loan with interest. So we would have been paying more than what the car was worth at the beginning. And now it's worth a lot less. Exponential functions, man, they can be really cool and earn you some money, or they can kind of suck. Uh, but it's real. It's real stuff. It's real life. So super real briefly, I'll talk about the COVID-19 application of these exponential functions. So we're looking at the graph of this stuff. We have, obviously, time down here. We have number of people infected. And uh, currently, we are in the exponential growth phase of number of people infected. We're going, it was slow at the beginning, and then it's kind of taken off. Now, obviously, this can't continue forever, won't continue forever, because we are social distancing, we are taking uh, steps that we need to, so it's not going to infect the whole world. It's totally not going to happen. Also, some people are recovering from this disease, <clears throat> right? So there's actually, in disease modeling, it's called the SIR model, S-I-R. That is the number of people susceptible. Susceptible? How do I spell that word? 
susceptible, S-U-S-C-E, susceptible. I is the number of people infected, and R is the number that are recovered. Okay, so what this graph is going to look like, right now we're in the exponential growth phase. Eventually we'll have some inflection point, some tipping point when the curve stops growing exponentially. It'll flatten off and then go back down. Ooh, that's a, not the prettiest graph I've ever graphed, but anyway, unfortunately, <clears throat> we're still right here. We are still somewhere in this exponential growth region. So keep doing the things that you need to do to take care of yourself so we can get this curve to flatten and uh, we can go back to our regularly scheduled programming. I miss you guys so much. I love you. Keep on that hustle. Come hang out with me in office hours. Send me any questions that you have and uh, I will talk to you next time.